Uh, was this trade the worst in NFL history? Christine, it pains me to say this, but I'm going to say yes. But it is not Russell's fault. It's the Broncos' fault. I have a question, guys. In the history of the NFL, have we ever seen a team willingly take on $85 million in dead cap money just to say, please don't play for us anymore? <laughs> <laughs> like, like that, that's it. That, that, to me, ends the discussion. Hey, they were like, we'll give you anything to go <laughs> away. <laughs> just leave. Just, just go. And I think that is why when you, you know, when you, Christine, when you bring up the players, it's right. not just the amount of players that they gave up, the amount of draft picks that they gave up, then they turn around and give the man an extension. And now, uh, a year later, we're looking at it like, okay, we don't want you to play for us. That is why, to me, beyond, bigger than Herschel Walker, but bigger than anything else, they are literally putting them in salary cap hell just to say, Russell, you ain't it. And that, that, to me, is a shame. I don't think it's Russell's role. I think it really is complete malpractice by the Broncos. Yep, I, I agree with you, but I don't agree with you. I agree with you that it's a terrible trade, but I'm telling you what. Look, back in the day when Dallas fleeced Minnesota mm -hmm. for, for Herschel Walker, look, think about this, though. And, and, and I understand, like, kind of back then, like, running backs were much more valued back then. But still, think about this now. The Cowboys got four players – Three ones, three twos, a three, and a six for Herschel Walker, who was with the, with the Minnesota Vikings, 42 games, 40 starts, a little less than 3,000 scrimmage yards, and then he bowled it in free agency. And the Cowboys, you know, in a, in a situation where it's supposed to be a win-win when you're talking about trades, when you really assess just how bad or good that they are, the Cowboys won three Super Bowls, the Minnesota Vikings have not been back to the Super Bowl since mid-70s. They haven't been in the Super Bowl. I mean, so look at the players that they acquired, too. Look at that. Emmitt, Darren Woodson, mm -hmm. Russell Marilyn, Kevin Smith. Yeah. I mean, this, this is such a bad trade that it's like, if you, are, if you agree with this kind of trade, if you are able to agree to this kind of trade as a general manager, you should never, ever, ever again – be allowed anywhere near an NFL building. Yeah, I got Ever. two of them. You shouldn't um, be allowed to play fantasy football. You shouldn't be allowed to trade football damn. cards. You shouldn't be allowed to talk about football. Hey, oh, period. Get up out of here. That's as bad as it gets right there. You talk about, like, football banishment. Dude. That's <laughs> terrible. Um, you got two? I got two. Worse than this? I'm going to start with Trey Lance. I Because I asked mm. on the email, I said, hey, can it be a draft pick? When you think about giving up first uh, three first rounders, also another pick to move up to number three to get a quarterback and having that quarterback not only not be your starter in year three, but not be on the team at all for your starting quarterback who 100 percent deserves to be the starting quarterback in Brock Purdy to be the last pick of the draft. If Brock Purdy is not who he is. If he doesn't become a pro bowler, if he can't be a leader of the franchise, John Lynch and Kyle Shanahan may be out of a job. We may be discussing them as putting this organization in championship purgatory because, now, Lou, I get it in Kimberly. It's not the death sentence no. it used to be to miss on a top five quarterback. Back in the day, if you missed on a top five quarterback, everybody was going to get fired. The, the quarterback was gone. The head coach was gone. The GM was gone. It's a little different now. But you do handicap your organization. And I think to make that trade and for it to work out the way it did, you're only lucky that Brock Purdy is who he is. And now, this is a pending answer. Oh, but come on. We got pending answers? It's a pending, <laughs> it's a pending answer because he has more time. But Deshaun Watson, it – when it initially happened, it wasn't a bad trade. If Deshaun Watson ends up being who he was prior to sitting out his last year in Houston, this makes total sense. To me, in 2020, he was the second best quarterback in the world behind – he's on a tier behind Patrick Mahomes and maybe Aaron Rodgers, who was the MVP the next two years. I thought he played so well then that that made sense. But since – He's only played 12 games for the Cleveland Browns. Joe Flacco ends up leading this team to the playoffs. And we haven't seen vintage 
Deshaun Watson. And on top of all you gave up to get him, you gave him a $230 million guaranteed yes. deal. He has to play this year, he has to play a lot, and he has to play well. Mm -hmm. Ryan, you Look mentioned the Brock Purdy of it all. Um, if he was not this player, if he was not a pro bowler, if the San Francisco 49ers did not make the NFC title game and did not make a Super Bowl, then they'd be in a world of trouble. But guess what? They did all those things. That's why Trey Lance, to me, is not the answer. It's a terrible trade. But the 49ers front office, they saved themselves because, call it luck, at the end of the day, it was scouting. Because, yeah, no, all no. the, because at the end of the day, they were like, you know what? With this pick we got from the Jimmy Garoppolo and all that, we're going to draft this kid. No, everybody else could, had seven rounds to take Brock Purdy. And they were able to find mm -hmm. a guy who, had an, who, for a lot of last season, was deservedly so in the MVP conversation, in my opinion. Now, that is why, to me, Trey Lance, it's a terrible, it's a terrible trade. But they still, where do you want to go? You want to get to the NFC title game? You want to get to the Super Bowl? Guess what, baby? We got there. <laughs> what I do know no. is that the Russell yes. Wilson experiment is dead and <laughs> over and buried, and we're not coming back. And it's the second franchise. This is the other part. It's the second franchise that has said, you know what? We're good. We're good using somebody else instead of Russell. Again, I don't think it's Russell's fault. You want to pay me all that money? You want to give me an extension? Yes, sign me up. Oh, for sure. But again, for the Broncos and what they gave up because they said they wanted Aaron, they took Russell, then they said, hey, we have Super Bowl aspirations, and now they're saying we don't want him, and we will take the $85 million dead caps. No. Mm -mm. Seattle got better as Denver yeah, yeah. now has gotten worse. Yeah. Seattle got better, but they weren't able to kind of really parlay this into – you know, winning the West, becoming the NFC representative in the Super Bowl, which would really, which would, you know, probably in modern day would probably put the nail in the coffin for this one, especially considering the fact that Denver then gave Russell a new contract, which makes it all the more worse for Denver. That's why, so if we kind of then juxtapose this with the, with the Vikings and the Cowboys trade, which makes this one so bad, is that the Cowboys built a dynasty off of this. So they didn't squander the picks. They picked Hall of Famers and Pro yes. Bowlers yes. and set themselves up for decades off of this trade. And the Vikings got worse. I mean, they got markedly worse. Yeah. Markedly worse. The guy, Herschel never ran for over 1,000 yards with Minnesota. Not once. They Not once. In the two years, he, was, he didn't go over 1,000 yards. <laughs> and then he left in two years. I mean, that, that's just – I mean, that, that's mind-boggling. Four players – Four ones, four twos, a third and a sixth for a running back who you get for two years and you still stink and then he leaves you in two years? <laughs> I mean, that, 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 so, I mean, that, that is so, that is so one-sided and so bad. The only thing Seattle, the only thing I wish Seattle would have done in this deal for them to kind of like really, like I said, put the nail in the coffin is that look, I thought Seattle was going to parlay these picks and the players that they got from Denver into a legitimate run in the West to where they were going to win it. Gino was going to have one of those miraculous mid-career like ascensions to where he was going to become a Super Bowl player or a Super Bowl participant. And then that would have really sealed the fate for Denver and saying, look, this is the worst trade in franchise history because you're, you're right. I mean, look, they botched this thing in every single way. Because they straight up panicked after they couldn't got, get the guy that they wanted. And then the kicker, though, the kicker is the contract. Fired up. The kicker is the contract then and what they're going to have to pay for it now. It's about to but, Lou, the thing, the thing was, Russell Wilson, the, the trade wasn't going to go through without Russell Wilson knowing that he was going to get that money. Yes. This started with the hiring of Nathaniel Hackett in hopes that you got Aaron yeah. Rodgers. Mm -hmm. And and once right, that right. once that yeah. didn't happen, it was the panic that set in and said, we got to have somebody. Sure. We can't start with the Daniel Hackett and Drew Locke. Mm -hmm. And once they made that decision, it set you on this path. And I know when you don't want somebody. Like, it's very easy. Like, if you walk into a room and somebody don't fool with you, you know. And when yeah. Sean Payton stood at the podium yeah. in his opening presser, yes. I knew from that yeah. day forward – Russell Wilson wasn't the one for him. Right. And he yeah. was just biding his time yeah. to get him yeah. out there.